it's, you know, this is what I always say to people. Objectively examine, but don't get, don't get too into it because that's, that's what saves you from it. Uh, because you can see then, okay, this is a playbook that's been used over and over again. But anyone, any, any cult expert who says the COVID-19 hysteria is not a cult, they have no ability to be calling themselves a cult expert because they're missing the obvious right in front of their faces. As you said in that letter to that lady, you nailed it. It's all there. Repetitive mantras, fear of the unknown. There's even steps, there's the, you know, the different steps you go through. There's the first lockdown, the second lockdown, the third lockdown. They're like the initiation things. So you can go clear, you know, you can go clear, like in Scientology, you know, this kind of thing. Uh, there's the vaccine, which is the ultimate salvation. It's a, it's, it's a messiah at this point. It just goes on and on. It goes on and on. That, that's the religious aspect that you've uh, mentioned. And also I've, I've watched another one of your videos where you went into that. And I actually made a note of this. I was actually thinking about the religious parallels and I wrote some of them down here. I'm sure, some, I'm sure a lot of people also um, noticed these. COVID-19 is the devil that must be feared. The NHS is the church. Scientists are the priests in white gowns. The mainstream media message is the gospel. Hand washing is prayer. Uh, mask yep. wearing is cross wearing. Vaccines are baptisms. Social distancing is abstinence. And Bill Gates is the Pope. I put, <laughs> but yeah, I just yeah. thought. But you could you could actually you could just look you can look for, for for patterns and you can see it quite clearly. And that's that's the religious cult aspect of COVID, isn't it? Yeah. Well, especially in the UK, where you know the NHS replaced Christianity. That was its purpose. That's that you know English, particularly left wing people in in the UK defend the talk about the nhs like it's a, it's a godly institution that it's like it's it's infallible it's incorruptible and uh, you see the, the this you know this whole thing it reminds me of these the when in our when ireland was very catholic when i was a kid you had these corpus christi parades where the local priest would test to see who is still a fanatic in a small country town or village and have a corpus christi parade and who didn't show up was obviously someone who was suspect. Now they're doing the same thing with the clapping. The mm. clapping thing, uh, who doesn't show up on your street is suspect. They're an unbeliever, a heretic, an apostate from the you know, the, 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 the pure church of the NHS. Uh, the NHS is just a public health service. They exist all over the world, but they have theological, theological sized in the UK to make it this remarkable uh, salvatory thing that gives, that gives life when there's no life, you know, that, that cures debt. And therefore it attracts narcissistic people like all cults. Cults are filled with narcissistic people who are like, and you see this, you know anyone who's ever joined like a church, like a Pentecostals or joined something, any kind of cult, they're suddenly very narcissistic and they're very, because they know more than you, they're more clever than you, they're smarter than you, they're better than you. So therefore the tic tac tock in the middle of a, a, a you know, a so-called pandemic, where hospitals were being told bodies are piling up in the corridors and dro doctors and nurses are dropping dead. We have them, not one or two, not dozens, not hundreds, but thousands of doctors and nurses all over the world making TikTok videos exactly. that are advanced dance routines that took time to rehearse and do when they're supposed to be under tremendous pressure. Now, they deliberately let them out there to test the faithful. Anyone with half a brain cell will go, the hospitals are empty. They're obviously not busy. No one has time to do that in a regular job. And they're doing that on the job in the hospitals and they're supposed to be packed. But what did the faithful do? The faithful went, they're wonderful people and they're dancing because they need to relieve stress. And that was a, that was a deliberate test, a test of your fate to see if you still had great fate in the healthcare system. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I actually I've spoken to nurses and frontline workers who've been working in COVID wars, and they said they're empty. So, and so a lot of them have been sent home because they just there's no one there, you know. So, um, a, re yeah. a, relative, a relative of mine is the biggest. It works in the largest hospital in Dublin, and he said he's an, he's an a paramedic, and he said it's never been quieter. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But they're gagged from talking about it. She said, and she said uh, if they do, they lose their jobs. So the, you know they have to keep stum. So I've actually had to vocode her voice so she doesn't get you know noticed. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's crazy what's going on. What so what do you think the clapping is for? I mean, I, I've got my own ideas about that, but it feels to me like you said, what one is to find out who the the heretics are on the street, you know, who the the, the outsiders. And you also saw that with, don't know if you noticed, but on Black Lives Matter, the blackout, where um, you know you're encouraged to you know black out your social media profile, and if you didn't do that, it was a way of actually immediately seeing who 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 in your friends are the racists, 
you know <laughs> that's the uh, that was the idea of you know so everyone felt obliged to somehow black out their profile even if they didn't believe in the kind of the trojan horse philosophy behind it politics behind it i should say um but is there any other reason for the clapping do you think i i almost feel as though it's sort of it's clapping it into it's solidifying it into consciousness this idea of this this terror this fear well if you look in catholicism and islam they go to the holy rosary they go to the beards they say prayers with each beard Everything is ritual. It has to be ritualized. Mm. The praying three times a day or the, the baptism font. It has to be ritual. Because when, and, and you'll get that in the cults. They'll, yeah. They will say, we have to dance every Thursday night. We have, we have a, you know, and when, and when you're having doubts, that's when they say in the cult, they will say, we say, look, I'm confused. I can't think. And the cult will say to you, that means you're breaking through to the next level of consciousness or your soul is being cleansed. What people are saying here is like, I'm suffering from brain fog. I'm, I'm, I'm confused. That's one of the symptoms, which is saying you're being blessed. It's kind of like a blessing and a curse at the same time. It means, you know, like you're being blessed and cursed at the same time. I'm having, you know, the asymptomatic thing. Asymptomatic is like the original thing thing in the Bible. You're born with a, like asymptomatic. What does that mean? You're not sick. Simple as that. But you, you're still sick because you're born with original sin. Asymptomatic is the secular version of original sin. It has to, you have it. Even if you don't have COVID-19, you have it because you're asymptomatic. Wow. Even if you've never, even if you're a newborn baby and you've never done a bad thing in your life, you've still got original sin. They're using that same playbook there.